I'm about to show you why being critical of a passage can help you get all the questions correct on the car section of the exam. Today, we're going to walk through the AAMC sample test cars passage number eight. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Like always, I'm going to read through the passage, kind of tell you what I'm thinking, and then show you how to formulate a main idea based off of that and show you how to answer every question correct with that main idea, as well as we may have to go back to the passage just a little bit, but we'll try to keep that to a minimal. So this passage is called International Migration. That really doesn't tell us much, but it does tell us that is from the American Psychological Association, which sometimes is helpful because it allows you to kind of put yourself in into that line of thinking rather than than thinking that this is like a literary critique or something like that. So let's read this passage, see what they're telling us, see what the main idea is, and see if we can pull out some of the tone and some of the arguments as well. This passage says, to immigrate, or to immigrate is to be extracted from one SES and inserted into a different one. The change projects immigrants into a new hierarchical, hierarchical distribution of power, privilege, and prestige that embodies systematically differentiated conditions of life. Okay, so they're, they're being really wordy right now, but what they're essentially doing is they're just kind of telling us what their definition of immigration is and it's moving from one SES to another and it involves a lot of other factors here and that's kind of what they listen the consequences are many our understanding of one important consequence derives from epidemiological findings that repeatedly demonstrate an inverse relationship between SES and psychological problems the stability of these findings has endured through three generations of successively improved studies that have increasingly focused on an explanation of this reason or of this relationship sorry so it seems like what they're saying is that immigration they they give us a definition and then they tell us that there's a lot of effects of it and then they kind of repeat seriously there's a lot of effects of it and then they tell us that the big one is that there is an inverse relationship between SES and psychological problems and they say that this is the one that's been studied the most but they keep telling us there's a bunch of them. Going on, it says social stress explanations are particularly relevant in this to this focus because they document the structural distribution of stress in the environments into which immigrants are inserted. Thus, um, one study indicates that the magnitude of social stress in the United States as measured by an index of desirable and undesirable life events is not only related to the usual way to SES, but increases geometrically as social status declines. So they're essentially saying here that social stress is the metric that they're going to use to measure the psychological status of the immigrants and that there are studies that are showing that they do struggle and that struggle changes geometrically. And then it goes on to say that this relationship is nonlinear, which seemingly parallels the distribution of many mental health problems, meaning this idea that mental health is usually something that plagues an individual or it doesn't touch an individual through their whole life. And they're saying that these, these individuals, unfortunately, are kind of plagued with mental health issues. At the bottom of the stratification heap, any source of stress tends to be pervasively disruptive in its effects. This is the, SC, this is the socioeconomic point of entry in the United States of sub substantial numbers of Dominicans, uh, Laotians, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Portuguese, Central Americans, and Mexicans. So they're saying that at the bottom of the social stratification, so the poorest individuals really, really struggle with mental health. So this is kind of the why this passage is important. Um, because this is something that people struggle with. And so they're trying to find um, a good answer or a good way to evaluate these immigrant status. Immigrants in the labor force are likely to have been selectively recruited in immigration by their exceptionally strong achievement motivation, including aspirations for the upward mobility of their offspring. So here they're pretty much saying that immigrants are selectively being hired based off of how hardworking they are or how motivated they are to ascend and climb, just like we are in medical school. Yet their socioeconomic point of entry affects the life chances of their offspring into future generations. So one person can make a change for the rest of their lineage. Even so, the effect of this transfer within families of socioeconomic advantages or disadvantages is not constant from one generation to the next. The continuity of status attainment depends, among other things, on the economic climate of the host society. So they're saying that there seems to be some relationship between um, a, a parent's SES and the child, you know, you can make a difference that goes on to help your generations, but it's not necessarily causal. It's not completely 100% indicative. It goes on to say, in fact, new arrivals are often downwardly mobile in their occupation, sometimes undertaking employment that differs qualitatively from the work for which they were educated. So sometimes they come over here and they actually have to take a job that they are overqualified for. 
Thus, despite Australia's abandonment in 1972 of a racially restrictive immigration policy, institutional barriers epitomized by a bureaucratic apparatus for the official recognition of professional qualifications. Okay, let's just pause here. This is something that the MCAT commonly does. They're using this specific story and they're using these words that do and should create like a visceral reaction in us, like racially restrictive um, institutional barriers, these harsh words. And they want you to latch on to this right here, this one example. But I want you, as I read it, I want you to challenge, I'm challenging you to kind of zoom out and think about where it fits into the bigger picture of this whole passage. Remember, I want you to be thinking of a main idea yourself as I'm reading through this. So we're kind of talking about how immigrants are struggling to adapt and there's a lot of social stresses associated with them. We talked about the main one that is associated with it. But then now what we're really doing is we're listing additional ones that also kind of explain some of the difficult psychological adjustments that come with immigrating to a state. Thus, despite Australia's abandonment in 1972 of a racially restrictive immigration policy, institutional barriers epitomized by a bureaucratic apparatus for the official recognition of professional qualifications kept immigrants from exercising their skills, thus diverting their human resources from their objective in immigrating. So... They came over here, say there's a doctor um, in the UK that wanted to go to Russia to practice medicine in Russia. I don't, I don't know. I'm just spitballing places. The doctor that's leaving the UK gets to Russia and says, hey, I want to be a doctor for you. And then they say, oh, well, we'd really rather you be a janitor, goodwill hunting style. And he's like, okay, well, I really came over here to be a doctor and now I'm downwardly mobile. So that kind of sucks. And that could cause some, some psychological issues, obviously, if you feel like you left a place to go somewhere else and then you get to that final destination and you can't even do what you came there for. As a result, substantial numbers of professionally qualified Chinese and Indian immigrants reluctantly opened small businesses in Brisbane and Sydney. Downgraded from careers in medicine, teaching, or accountancy, they sold newspapers, frozen seafood, or real estate. So that was just an example of what I just gave you an example of. So ask yourself again, how does this all fit into the big picture of the passage? And it's saying that one of the other stressors is this downward migration, especially when you're looking forward to getting to your final destination and practicing your career of choice there. Reading on, it says, examination of discontinuities in SES contingent on immigration justifies the conclusion that the customary stress assessment models do not provide an adequate explanation. The failure of such models to exhaust the possibilities for psychological research on immigrants is clearly indicated by research on the value of biculturalism. So they're just saying that the previous studies that we've done have identified one of the major problems, but they're not encompassing enough. Aside from the socioeconomic and cultural environment of immigrants, their feelings of satisfaction and renewal are also relevant to their adaptation. Learning opportunities emerge as new social institutions interact in myriad ways with the psychological responses of immigrants and unforeseen problems that often give rise to flexible responses. So this seems like we're kind of spinning it towards a positive light. In fact, many of the reluctant entrepreneurs in Australia subsequently came to enjoy the freedom and independence of being their own boss. So I want to give you a little MCAT tip real quick, um, and then I'll, I'll summarize this paragraph again. Anytime that the MCAT has like a transition phrase, um, a however, or an in fact is the one we see here, or therefore, something like that. Um, whenever I was learning how to study the Bible, even in elementary school, I can remember my Sunday school teachers always saying, whenever you see a therefore, you need to ask yourself, what's it there for? And that was actually really good advice because the purpose of a transition word is to move towards the meat of a statement. So anytime you see a transition word or a transition phrase like this, go ahead and be ready because the author is probably about to tell you what he or she really thinks. And so you're probably going to be able to pick up on, on a lot of tone here. So this statement right here following this transition phrase kind of summarizes everything. Um, sometimes being downwardly mobile shows these people a job that they really enjoy. So it can be a good thing because they learn that, hey, I don't have to work 65 hours as a heart surgeon. I can sell newspapers, still make good money, and have actually some free time. So anytime you see a therefore, ask yourself, what's it there for? Contemporary large-scale cross-cultural migrations offer promising research targets for the study of human adaptation as migration-induced changes rupture the continuity of experience and a socio-cultural context. Adaptations so profound ensue that some immigrants have called them a second 
birth. Wow, that's kind of strong. Um, as currently formulated, social stress models of adjustment are not adequate to account for the complex exchanges between humans and social organizations involved in these changes. This is kind of weird because it seems like they almost summarize this in like a pseudo main idea here. So for my main idea, I wrote immigrant social stress is multifaceted. And I gave myself a colon and then I listed those facets. So socioeconomic status is one thing that is indicative of social stress. Motivation is indicative of social stress. Downward mobility um, plays in social stress and increase in freedom actually helps with your social stress or your adjustment to immigration. So this is kind of a um, unique passage because my main idea here is essentially just me stating the main idea and then listing those facets. So everything you see after this colon is really and truly an argument. It's not the main idea, but because I could do it so quickly, why, why not, right? Why not go ahead and list them out? This is like what, eight, 10 words, something like that. So Let's go ahead and jump into these questions and see how we can apply this main idea and see if we can use it to get all of them correct. Number 43 says, a new U.S. citizen who is trained as an engineer is unable to find employment in this field. What advice would the author most likely give this person? So remember the first thing you do every time you read a question is you rephrase it into something a little bit more simple. I'm simplifying the question. If you don't know how to do that, then check out our strategy video titled Simplifying the Question. So I'm going to say, how could the author spin this positively? How could the author be able to turn this into a good thing? So A says, consider a new occupation that offers other advantages. Well, remember when we talked about freedom, the whole th reason that we even talked about freedom here is that this downward mobility sometimes forced people into different jobs and they discovered that they liked something else that gave you freedom. So I kind of like A, that's, that is what the author discussed. B says, look for work that offers the respect due to an engineer. That is advice that I would probably give because I'm a jerk or somebody, you know, like your dad would give you. Um, but that's not anything that was touched on in the passage. And so if it seems not, if it seems relevant, if it seems like good advice, but it was not touched on in the passage, it is not the correct answer. Okay, this is a cop-out answer choice. It just feels safe. So maybe not B. C says trying to find work in a field that is related to engineering. That's another one of those cop-outs, right? That sounds like what you should do. But that was not touched on in the passage. So if it's not touched on in the passage, then it would not be the author's advice, right? Because the author just wrote a 700-word passage about what they think. So don't put words in their mouth. So you say, maybe not to C. These are cop-out answer choices. D says conceal your background when applying for entry-level jobs. So lie your way into it. No, concealing your background was never mentioned, so maybe not D either. And that leaves A as being the only answer that was even mentioned in the passage um, and the correct answer here. Number 44 says, the author suggests that adjustment is difficult for the poorest immigrants to the United States because of what? So what makes immigration harder? That's how I would rephrase this one. What makes immigration harder? Going and looking back at my main idea, it says that it's hard because of a bunch of reasons. So let's go through this. A says an expectation that the status of their children would exceed their own. They talked about children briefly, but this was not in this was not the context. They talked about their children saying that sometimes you could be successful and then your kids would not be successful. So maybe not A. Um, that's that's something that I would call name drop name dropping if you watch our video about avoiding traps on the MCAT. B says an unexpected discrepancy between the new culture and the familiar one. That, again, was not touched on really in the passage, so I'll say maybe not to be. Ceases prejudices by employers that prevent their finding employment. This right here is why I warned you not to latch on to that idea about Australia because it talked about how there were some racial, um, some like racist policies that led to people not getting hired. But that was one stepping stone to make a larger argument. The whole passage was not centered around this idea that employers are prejudiced against immigrants. The whole passage was centered around the idea that it is difficult for the poorest immigrants to find what makes immigrating hard and adjusting to that lifestyle or assimilating is really, really broad. So I don't, I, C is not technically, I don't really like C for that reason. I want something broader. I want something closer to my main idea. And D says a tendency for particular problems to affect many aspects of their lives, right? That's just about the main idea. It's multifaceted. So I like D. D is the correct answer here. Number 45 says the social stress explanation of adaptation difficulties among immigrants would be most challenged by the finding that what? Okay, we have a question like this that says um, the social stress explanation or a specific um, explanation or theory or thought process or individual. You have to ask yourself, does this 
right here, what I am looking at and comparing, does that align with my main idea, yes or no? Here, the social stress explanation was the idea that the author said was not broad enough. Here, they talk about it right here, talking about how it's just not broad enough to encapsulate the true answer. So I'm gonna say the social stress explanation is not necessarily in line with my main idea. It's the one that is a little bit too focused in on SES status that like we talked about at the very beginning. And that stated that as your SES rises, your stress goes down. I'll show you two in the passage here. Inverse relationship between SES and psychological problem. That's what they're talking about. So what I'm going to say now is that what would challenge this idea? Which of these answer choices most challenges this idea right here? A says many report no increase in their level in stress. Well, maybe they stay at the same SES, so that's why they have no increase, so maybe not A. B says those with the lowest status report the least stress. That's a direct relationship, so that would challenge the theory, so maybe to B. C says the only stress reported occurs during social encounters. Well, that stress level could still be inversely related with your SES, so maybe not C. And then D says most skilled workers report finding work in their field. It's the same explanation for C. This could be true, but even if this is true, it doesn't mean that this is false. And he, what you're looking for in an answer choice that's trying to challenge something is if the answer choice is true, then it makes the statement false. If your answer choice is true, it makes your rephrasing of the statement false. And so if B is true, then it makes this our rephrasing false. And so B is correct. That's only for those that are trying to challenge a finding. Sometimes you'll be asked to support a finding, and there you're really looking for something that's going to usually agree with the main idea or one of the big ticket arguments in the passage. Number 46 says, according to the passage, recent immigrants are particularly likely to experience a loss of socio socioeconomic status if what? So which of these was discussed in the passage that will lead to downward mobility? A says qualification policies prevent them from practicing the profession. That sounds about right. That sounds like you're saying that if I, um, whenever I become a doctor, I guess medical school and residency will be over in like 65 years. And so once that's, once that's done, if I want to go and practice medicine in a different country, I won't be able to because I won't have passed their boards and their policies and their licensing processes. And that's kind of what they were talking about in the passage. So maybe the answer choice A. B says their limited education forces them to work in low paying fields. Were they were talking about doctors and accountants and teachers. These are well-educated people. Um, and so they, they would still be downwardly low. Maybe not B. C says they are too demoralized to pursue opportunities for advancement. This seems realistic. I mean, I would be demoralized by this process, but that's not what the author was talking about. And remember, if it's not discussed, it's not the right answer. So maybe not C. D says language barriers reduce their usefulness to potential employers. I, I can't I, I can't fathom moving to a new country and trying to get a job and provide for my family without speaking the language, but that was not discussed in the passage. And if it's not discussed, then it's not for us. So maybe not D. So that leaves A as the correct answer. It's the only one that was talked about or hinted at. And notice, for a lot of these questions, they're not directly saying the answer choice. Even though I'm saying, oh, it's the only one that was talked about, they're not directly saying these things. But if I want to draw these back to the main idea, I can draw answer choice A back to downward mobility. Because when we were talking about downward mobility, that's when we discussed accountants and teachers and people like that that were losing their qualifications or the licensing processes and not being able to practice in those fields anymore. So that's what I mean by that. And then this last one says, how would the author be most likely to interpret the finding that the motivation of immigrants and their eventual incomes are positively correlated. So if we found out that increasing motivation led to increasing outcomes or increasing incomes, what does the author think about that? Or does my main idea agree or disagree with this statement? It's okay with it, right? So let's go ahead and read through the answer choices and see if any of them agree or disagree with that. A says stress level is not the only factor in immigrant adjustment. I mean, that's my main idea. It's multifaceted. So I like A. B says lower income immigrants may be less likely to join labor unions. We didn't talk about labor unions. Maybe not B. C says the ability of immigrants to communicate determines the prestige of their jobs. We did not talk about communication, so maybe not C. Um, D says employers assume that immigrants with this trait are high in status. This seems reasonable, but also it didn't feel like status was something that was important to employers. You know, if people like doctors and accountants and teachers are having to go and sell frozen seafood, then it doesn't seem like previous status makes a difference once you immigrate. So I, maybe not D. Again, it's not something that was really, status wasn't something that was really discussed. Um, and so that leaves A is the only correct answer and it is in line with the main idea. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.